Today we're going to create an animation and setup rig for placing a stent using a catheter and balloon like would happen in a coronary artery. We're also going to use the Espresso system to drive and control the expansion of the stent and actually the creation of the stent itself. I'll just be doing a simple lighting system and simple materials, nothing complicated. And we'll use some deformers to control the uh, bending and deformation of the artery itself. Project files are linked in the description. Check out some of the other links while you're there and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D. I'm going to go ahead and start with creation of the stent itself. And to do that, I'm going to use a helix. And so let's just set up a simple helix structure. And we don't want it to be too crazy big. So instead of 200, I think I'm gonna make it 20 uh, at the start radius and 20 at the end radius. Rotation segments, I'll leave it at 72. And what I wanna do is create a, a cloning system that clones this helix I also want to use the Espresso system to control the number of rotations uh, and the length and the radius of the curve. So let's get that set up first thing. So we're going to need two of these. One of them is going to be rotated opposite, right? So if this one's 720, this one's going to be minus 720. And the two of these together duplicated around a circle uh, in a radius will give us the look we're looking for. So let's create a cloner and put both of these in there. I'm actually gonna group both of these together, so option G, so then it's cloning that, that system together, or so then it's cloning that group together instead of each individually. And I wanna use a radial cloner, and I just wanna make sure I am cloning in the correct axis, and I don't wanna have any radius at all, right? I want it to be zero. And that is giving us what we're looking for, right? So now the number of clones that we make is going to determine sort of how many of these there are and how tight this looks. So I think this looks pretty good for a simple stent. Um, and what I want to do now is make, make it so that we can actually control a lot of this information. Like I want to be able to control the helix um, end and start radius I also want to be able to control this end angle. And what that'll do is allow you to set this rig up one, one time, and then if you want to come back and use it for another animation in the future, uh, create a bigger one or something like that, or a smaller one, it'll be really easy to do just by manipulating this. And so what I'm going to do is select the cloner. I'm going to say tags, um, programming tags, and Espresso. And if we open up our Espresso group, you'll see uh, it gives us this system here and I'm going to drag in helix and helix one. Maybe I'll label these as helix one and helix two. And I'll just remember that helix two is going to be the reverse of helix one. And to, so I want to be able to see both of these things at the same time. So I'm just going to temporarily dock this on the side so that we can see everything happening all at once. And I'll zoom in to my stent here. And right now this is just a spline object, so it's not going to render or anything like that. But what I want to do is set this up so that we can control it all really easily. So I'm going to add an input, and that input is just going to be an integer. And this integer that shows up right here is this dot. I can right click it and rename it if I want to. And this is going to be the radius. And the way we access that is just by clicking on this Espresso tag up here and it shows up right there so I can change this number. And on each of these, Helix 1 and 2, what I want to do is add an input port. So I'm going to click right here, come down to Object Properties, and select um, both End Radius and Start Radius on each one. So End Radius and Start Radius. And I would like to just connect this port to that one, right? So let's try just connecting this port to see what happens. We'll just do this one, right? If I do that and change the number to 20, right? That's creating that nice 20 start radius and end radius. So that's working for us really well, right? So if I just now link these all together, I can simply come in here at any time 
and click and drag this, and this is going to give us our expansion of our stent as we animate it to open up and compress the uh, fatty cholesterol plaque that's inside the artery. So this is great, wonderful control all at once. I also want to be able to control that rotation, and so I want to go ahead and add another input port, and I want to do uh, another integer. And this one I'm going to label uh, rotation. And we have to do something a little bit different for this one. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and add in our uh, object properties. And what I want to put in here is end angle. And so I'll do this on both of these. And if I just connect this right away, it's going to break our system. And now these are all just going to be straight lines, right? But if I come into my, so this gets a little crazy, right? If I like 360 or 70, basically what's happening is this turn, it's turning this number into radians versus degrees. So for it, I'm, I'm inputting something and expecting degrees. It's not what I'm going to get. And so what I need to do is add another function in here. So I'm going to go ahead and double click right here or right click here. I'm going to say new node, Expresso Calculate, and I'm going to add a degree node. And this degree node will allow me to output to each one of these. An input here. So now if I type something like 360, so there's something I need to do first, and that's just select this and change it from degree to radians. And what that allows me to do is come in, and now if I type in in my Expresso tag 360, I'm actually getting one full 360 degree rotation. But you'll notice, of course, they're both doing the same thing right now. I need this one to go the opposite direction, so I do need to add one more function in here. Uh, so I'm going to right click and say New Expresso Calculate Math. And this is something we're going to use down the road to help us control something as well. And so right now we'll set this up. What I want to do is change this mad math to um, subtract. And what I want to do is subtract the number that I'm inputting and start with zero, right? So if I subtract the number that I'm inputting first, it's going to give me a negative number. So I'm going to make my... Um, So what I need is grab this, actually this output, put it in our input here, and then put this in this bottom one. And that's going to give us that uh, rotation. Uh, so one of these is actually a negative number. So just a nice way to, to set this up. And just to give you an idea for how this works now, I can say I want this to be 720, and it's automatically going to create uh, 720 degree rotation and I can actually come in here and do this manually but you can see if I don't do it by uh, exact amount they don't always line up right so if I did 180 or 90 they're gonna line up and it would be fine but if I did like you know 23 uh, or you know 123 I'm not gonna get ending points that are gonna close so I want to make sure that I'm get, getting at least like um, in increments that are going to give me that closing point, and I know at least that 90 degree increments work. So 720, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and keep this on 360. I just like the ability to go ahead and change this at any time that I want to. Uh, let's go ahead and add one more thing in while while we're here. We're going to add in the height, and what this does is it allows us to be able to manipulate the height of both of these things at any time. And so I'll add one more integer in here, and we'll call this one height. And on both of my helix objects, I'm going to say object properties height. Just drag these a little bigger so that they're easier to see connect these ports together. 
And now, not only am I controlling the radius and the number of rotations, I can also control how long or short my stent is and animate that if I needed to, but I won't be needing that in this particular animation. So just a nice way to get this set up so that you can uh, create something really easily. I'm going to go ahead and label this cloner stent. And let's set this up so that we can actually render it. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create uh, a sweep object. I'm going to put that sweep object on each of my helix guys, and I'm going to create a circle to sweep around that. And that circle is going to be something like two centimeters wide. I'll put that as a child of my sweep. Grab that, put it down here, control drag another one down. And then I'm going to just drag this helix up one step in each of these. And now it's actually creating this nice uh, sweep to generate a stent that can be rendered. So these are a little big. I'm going to go ahead and knock them both down to one. And they may need to be even smaller, but we'll see. I think I'm going to say point. Seven. Groovy. And for each of these sweeps, let's go ahead and add a cap because you might have noticed that these endpoints were looking kind of ugly. And so I'm going to go ahead and just make this round and round it off until it's as big as I can get it and it's not uh, so they're nicely overlapped like that. So great, we've got a beautiful looking stent that we can manipulate and change any way we like really quickly now. So I'm going to save this file by itself, um, and I'm going to save it in, and I'm just going to call this stent rig. And now in the future, anytime I have an animation where I need to use a stent, I can just pull this file up and I can make manipulations to it, and I don't have to go through the work of creating a new stent every time. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save this project again, but I'm going to save it as Animated Stent. And this will be the one I work with moving forward. So let's go ahead and create the balloon and guide wire and everything that we need to guide this into the artery. Uh, so we just need a really long capsule. We need two capsules, right? So we need one capsule that's going to be the balloon itself. It needs to be a Z plus facing balloon. It needs to be a little longer than our stent, and it needs to be a little bit more narrow than our stent. Now, I want to be able to animate this balloon and control it at the same time that I'm animating my stent. So to do that, I'm actually going to add this capsule in here as well. And what I want to do is add in the capsule's um, radius. And so I can use this same radius system, right? So if I just drag this first radius that we created, it's actually going to make a capsule that's a radius, but it's slightly intersecting. So I might want to add just a slight little math object in here. And this math object is going to be um, another input port that will allow me to, it's not going to be an input port, it's going to be a math operand uh, that I can control just to reduce this radius. And so let's create a new node, Expresso Calculate Math. And again, we're going to say Subtract. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to say, take this radius that I created for you and subtract a number, right? So maybe I will make a new input port. I'll say um, integer. If I can, I wish I could move these up, but that's OK. Uh, what I'll say is uh, math integer. This one's going to be capsule shrinking or balloon shrinking. And our balloon shrinking is going to be our secondary input. Right now, this is going to be our output. So right now, it's saying take our stent radius, right? Subtract whatever number I put in here, which currently is zero, and then make that our capsule radius. So if I come into my Expresso tag now and put in one, it's going to shrink it down by one. I put in like 0.5 or points. Oops. 
Actually, this needs to be a real number, not an integer. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete this and make a new one. Uh, let's say real. And I'll rename this again, uh, balloon shrinking. And then I'll, I will be able to put in a decimal point, like 0.6 or 0.8. So doing that gives us this nice ability to just modify. A little tiny bit. So that's looking really nice. Um, let's go ahead and set up our capsule so that it has more segments. So we'll do like 32, let's just double everything. Height segments, actually I'm gonna do more than double it. I'm gonna quadruple it because this whole thing's gonna bend eventually and I want those segments. I want it to have plenty of segments. I'm actually gonna do more than that. I'm gonna double this again and do 32. That'll be nice. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too uh, complicated. Uh, just gives us this nice system that we can animate to. And later on, when I insert the balloon into the cap, into the um, artery and then pull it back, this shrink balloon will allow us to then shrink the balloon again and pull it back even more. And we can do all that animation control just from this little panel. So it's really helpful. All right, let's go ahead and create the guide wire that we're going to need to put in the middle. And this will be, this will act as the catheter itself. And what I need for that is just a really long capsule. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this one Z plus. It's only going to be like two, but it's going to be huge. All right, so let's make it like 3,000. Because it has to go down however long I make this wire, right, this vessel. Uh, my view in this case is not going to be showing very much, so it doesn't have to be incredibly long. Uh, let's do 2,000. Right, so if you've ever looked at a stent, uh, it's got a catheter that is also a guide wire that kind of goes down the artery. And then once it's in place, then the balloon expands just like an angioplasty. It is technically an angioplasty with a stent around it. And that's how the stent is put in position. So we've got everything set up right now. We'll call this one guide wire. Or you could call it catheter, whatever you like. This one's going to be called the balloon. Um, and so check this out. We can use our radius now to control both the balloon and expand it. We can also you know, control all these other things. And we can expand this out and shrink the balloon by itself after we're done and pull it out. So we've got a wonderful setup for us to use. I think once this expands completely, I don't want it really to be any bigger than like 35. So I'm just kind of gauging this based on the stent that I made. And that's gonna help me figure out how big I want my vessels to be. Uh, and right now I'm gonna go ahead and close up my Espresso editor. I'm gonna look in my uh, right view and I'm going to draw a pa draw a spline that I'm going to use as my vessel. And let's just have it go here, curve up, and then curve back down. And I'll just zoom in on like an area right in here. So that's great. We're going to call this one uh, vessel spline. And then what I want to do is create, um, basically I'm going to create the fat portion first, the, the piece that's going to, or the, the cholesterol center. And then I'll create uh, the 
outer layer and the inner layer of the vessel after that point. So the first thing I need is a cylinder. And this is going to be the outer. Uh, we'll call this outer fat. It's really, you know, cholesterol plaque, but we can say fat. And I'll do, let's go ahead and, and align this to our vessel first. And we're going to use a spline wrap to do that. So I'm going to say spline wrap, make that a child of my cylinder, tell it to be using the vessel spline and to work in the Z plus dimension. And right now it is doing this to our spline. Um, actually, I need to make both of these Z plus, right? So the cylinder itself is being created along the Z dimension and the spline wrap is deforming along the Z dimension. And so if I just give my cylinder some more height segments, let's just give it something like 720. Um, so you can see it's got a lot of segments, but it's still kind of clunky looking. And that's because of the way this spline is constructed. So instead of having it set to adaptive, I'm going to change it to natural. And then I'm going to come into these number segments in between, and I'm going to say something like 64. Right, so that really smooths it out in between, and it gives it a lot of um, curvature to work on. It's very a lot more subtle. So if you ever see that sort of clunky look, now you know what's happening. Let's give it some more rotation segments as well. We'll say like 32. I think I could probably ease up on the height segments, but I'm not going to. So our outer fat, what I want to do to cre actually create the first tube, and there's a reason I'm doing it this way instead of just making a tube, because I need to control the inner diameter uh, and the outer diameter separately. Um, and so, and, and in specific locations. And so what I want to do is create a, a Boolean. And so the outer one is going to be the outer outside edge. And then the inner one is going to be what's actually going to be squished down to create the plaque inside. And so let us do a duplicate of this one. And that is a child. Uh, and then we'll call this one inner. And I want these to be overlapping each other so they can do a really good Boolean. And what I want to do with the out, outer one is just reduce the way that it's being wrapped. So instead of from 0 to 100 in our spline wrap function for the outer one, I'm just going to knock it up two percentages and down for two percentages, so 2 to 98. For this inner one, I'm going to shrink it down in the radius uh, from 50 to like, mm, let's just try 40. So this will be the actual width of it. So that's giving us this sort of tube within a tube. And then on its spline wrap function, I'm going to do one degree changes. So up one in the from and down one in the two. Uh, and then I'm going to create a Boolean object. So under our objects here, I'll go to bool. And what I want to do is make sure it's under subtract and I want to have a subtract b, shift click both of these and drag them in there. And because we set these up to be really nice objects to begin with, the bool function worked really well. And so this will essentially be our fat or cholesterol layer. I think maybe it's a little too thick. And so I might just go like 45 on the outer one. Yeah, I think that's going to be nice. And what I want to do now, I'll call this uh, cholesterol or fat layer. What I want to do now is actually do another bool of this bool. And this time I'm going to have to use a cube because I want to cut this in half, right? So what I can see halfway through it. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to use a cube. And so I'm going to create a cube. That cube in the 
z dimension is going to have a lot of segments. I'll do the same number as I did for my uh, vessels up here. And then I'll just give it like six and six for the other dimensions. And it's gonna need to be pretty tall in the Y. And I'm gonna duplicate this spline vessel. I'm gonna call this cut spline. And I'm gonna call my cube um, cut cube. And what I wanna do is create a bool uh, and a spline wrap. So I'm actually just gonna grab my spline wrap from this outer one and make it a child of, so I control dragged it up and I'm making it a child of cut cube. But I'm gonna change it from vessel spline to cut spline. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm now gonna grab this cut spline and I'm gonna move it so that it is just overlapping in that way. I'm, I'm just gonna change some of these dimensions. It doesn't need to be quite that long and let's move that spline back over. So the cut spline is controlling the placement of this cube. And I wanna make sure that it is really dividing it perfectly in half. So I'm gonna to try to zoom in here and just give it a little bit of tighter control. And that's pretty close, so I can nudge it in a little bit tighter as we go. Uh, and I also wanna make sure that this one is actually going from zero to 100. So hopefully that's making sense now why I was doing all those changes. So we've got this cube overlapping this fatty layer in a way that is completely overlapping it. And now I can actually create another bool object. And I wanna say A minus B, so I'm gonna put my fat layer in there and then cut cube is gonna be the second thing. So we've got bool, our fat layer, and then cut cube. And that's gonna cut that fatty layer right in half. Well, this seems like probably a lot of work. I could have gotten this very similar result just using a tube right, and then slicing it using the slice function, which is what I'm gonna do in a moment. But I'm gonna show you now why I did this because there is a method to this madness. Uh, the reason I did that is because I want to be able to apply a bulge object only to this inside uh, section. And you could not do that if you used a tube, right? That would be a really challenging thing to do. So um, it's probably possible, but I don't know how to do that off the top of my head. And so I want to, what I want to do now is create a bulge object. I'm going to tell this bulge to be a child of my inner, inner fat tube. And then I'm going to use the align to spline under animation tags. And I'm going to tell it to align to the vessel spline. And then all I have to do is change the position and put this bulge object where I want it to be. So let's say this is where my uh, cholesterol plaque is going to appear. Um, and then I'm not going to hit tangential on this because I, I need to be able to control the rotation on this bulge object, right? So I'm going to make it a little taller. I'm going to hit fill it. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And, you know, we may want to do a little less than 90 so that it's, or a little more than 90, yeah, a little less than 90 so that it's really aligned with that location. And now what happens when I use the bulge object here and I increase or decrease the inner tube bulge is now, voila, we have our cholesterol plaque generated and we've got this nice cut. Uh, and so really the, the height of this bulge is controlling the length of that deformation. And now I can, um, continue on using all of this information that I have to produce the inner and outer layer to function exactly the same way. And so let's go ahead and save this. And let us make our outer and inner layers. And so this bool is called 
we'll just call it flack. So hopefully that makes more sense to me. Let's create a tube. And this tube is going to be in the Z dimension as well. I'm going to give it the same amount of segments in the height. It's going to have 720. How big around is it going to be? Well, let's open up our fat layer. So we're going to do the outer, outer part now. Our outer radius is 45 centimeters. So this tube's inner radius is going to be 45. And the outer radius is going to be 55. Rotation segments, what did I do for my cylinder? I did 32, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I want to control drag this spline wrap as a child of my tube. And I wanna tell it to slice. So under the tube object, you have the option to slice. So I can say 180 to 360. And what's that? what that has done is given us this nice outer layer that is outside of our bool inside fat object. Uh, it's a little thick now, so I think I'm gonna tell it not to be quite so thick. Let's say, um, let's just do 50 and see how that feels. Feels pretty good. And now I'm gonna call this one outer layer. I'm gonna control drag this one down and rename this one as inner layer. And this one I want to start on the outside, the outer radius, to be the same as our inner fat radius, so 40. So outer radius is going to be 40. Inner radius is just going to be 35, so this one's a little, a little thinner. It's actually going to be less than that, I think. I'm going to do like uh, 37, right? I want it to be a pretty thin layer. Yes. And then the last thing I want to do with that one is actually drag this bulge object up, control drag it, and make it a child. And now it's doing exactly the same thing in exactly the same place uh, as the previous one. So we've got this bulge object, this bulge object, um, and we've got our cholesterol plaque built. All I need to do is just nudge my little spline, my cut spline over to get these things aligned a little better. So I'm going to zoom in and see if I can just nudge that in. I'd rather it be a little in, but uh, let's see, coordinates. There we go, just a couple of tight adjustments and that's looking pretty nice. Let's go ahead and throw some materials on here just so we can see things more clearly. I'll just create one standard material. This will be our outer layer. It'll be like kind of a darker darker red to represent a, an artery. And I'll give it a little bit more roughness, maybe 0.4. I'm gonna throw that on our outer layer. I'll control drag this down. Just to make it a lighter version of that. And this will be our inner layer. Adding label these. And I'll control drag this one. I'm not going to do any really detailed materials for this project. I'm just going to do simple colors. Um, just because I want to get more of the like technique of actually creating this in here. It's more what I care about for this tutorial than about the actual environment and all that. So this one's gonna go on our plaque and that'll just apply to everything underneath there. So now we've got some good color options here. While we're in here, why don't we go ahead and make our balloon and our stent or metal, we'll just call it metal. Flat. For the balloon, let's just give it a lighter, really light gray color, and let it. Let's just give it a little bit of. Uh, I'm going to change the index of refraction to like 1.1, 1 
and make it transparent using the transmission area. We'll just do like 0.85. That'll be our, our balloon. And then for metal, let's just uh, give it a dark -ish gray color, make it very highly reflective. It's just like a 0.1 for roughness. And let's go ahead and give it a coat as well. I'll just leave it white and give it a weight of 0.8. I'll leave that zero for roughness, and I'm gonna give the other one reflection a 0.3 for roughness. So I've just got that combination. And that'll be our metal. Uh, so I can apply the balloon to this balloon capsule and the metal to the guide wire and the metal to the stent. So that's just the basic setup. We've got everything ready now to sort of animate. Um, everything can be, be easily controlled. I'm going to go ahead and hit NA so I'm not looking at all of the um, polygon structures. So we've got our stent set up uh, with the balloon. Uh, and what I want to do under this stent set up with the guide wire and the balloon is I'm going to have this be two sort of separate things, right? So the guide wire and the balloon are going to be animated separately from the stent itself in terms of like going into the vessel. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to use the spline wrap again and uh, putting them together causes some very specific problems where you can't really pull the balloon out without moving everything forward. So it creates a real challenge. I'm just going to animate the guide wire and balloon by themselves. So what I'll do is group those together and make this group called balloon and guide. I'm actually going to group this stent again too. Uh, and I'll call this stent animated. The reason I did that is I'm going to put the spline wrap in this group and I'm going to put the spline wrap in this group. And then that'll allow me to manipulate them more easily. And so I'm going to go ahead and create one spline wrap. I'll put this one as a child of the balloon. I want to make sure I'm going Z plus. Let's see what's happening right now. Well, nothing's happening because I haven't told it which spline to use. We're going to use the vessel spline. Um, and apparently my guide wire I didn't put any segments in there, so let's do like 720 again for that. Oh no. Height segments, 720. There we go. So right now our spline wrap is taking this entire guide wire and balloon and it's wrapping the entire thing along to the end of our spline which is not what I want. I want it to keep its length. So I'm gonna change mode to keep length. Now you can see the balloon in there. And so what I wanna do first is kind of just position this balloon so that it's centered with the bulge. So I'm gonna use the offset function here and just move it over until that balloon is kind of perfectly centered there. So 10 looks pretty good. Uh, I think I'll just keep that there. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my stent. I'm going to control drag this spline wrap down. And now I'm just going to have to change it a little bit because the stent is actually way down here. And it's because it's using the length of this object when it controls it. So it's taking into account the overall length and positioning it based on that. So the stent um, is going to be way down here. And this is going to cause some issues that we need to look at when we're animating, but we'll get there. So I just need to increase the position of the stent with the offset. And I'll align these now the way I'd like them to be aligned. And I might have to use half points for 6.5 to get it where I want it. So this is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and give myself like 450 frames. That'll be a 50 second anima 15 second animation. And so I can think about like how I want this animation to happen. I kind of want the 
you know, the guide wire stent to come in and maybe around 120, it starts to expand and then it's going to leave the balloon and the guide wire will leave right of the catheter or whatever. So I'm going to come in at 120 and I'm going to give both of these a keyframe. So offset here at that point and on the spline wrap here, offset at that point. And then I'll back it up to like 60. And let's have this one. Uh, go back down and it just needs to go off the frame. So I'm just going to say minus 22 and call it good. Uh, and at that same point now, wherever it is, I need my stent to be in exactly that same position again. So I'm going to have to animate this one backwards and then place it. That actually looks really good. So 14.5. What we're going to see is when I animate this, they're not going to animate at the same time and they're going to be sliding around past each other. Actually, they worked really well. <laughs> okay, great. Sometimes I have seen this not work out this perfectly. This is uh, wonderful. Okay, fantastic. So it's a nice, smooth animation. Everything seems to be aligned perfectly. Wonderful. So just taking some time to get that animation looking the way you want, want it to is really huge. Okay. Now that we've got this animation in place and everything is looking good, let's make some adjustments. So I don't want this to start off being this large, right? I want it to be really small. And so um, let's take our Expresso tag off of our cloner and throw it on our stent animated. That way we'll always see it in our main hierarchy here. And I'm just gonna change the radius, right? So I'm gonna turn this down so it's really small. And that'll be our insertion, right? So now we've got our guide wire coming in and inserting. It's going to pause right here. And after it's there, it's going to start expanding. So I'll give it a few frames, like maybe to 130. And I'll change this radius over a few frames to be the size that I want it to be. And I can adjust this later if I need to, but 35 looks pretty good. So I'm just going to animate the placement of the stent first, and then the removal of the guide wire, and then I'll come back and I'll animate the bulge uh, to reduce the, or to compress the, the fatty components. All right, so we want that to kind of pause for a little bit. And then let's say around frame to 20 here, I want to change the balloon shrinking, right? So I want the stent to stay in place, and I want the balloon to shrink. So I'll give that maybe to 250. I'm going to increase the number to make the balloon smaller. And then kind of as this is shrinking down, I want this dent and the guide wire and the balloon to begin moving away. And so the balloon and guide wire controls our keyframe there. And let's say over this amount of time, we're going to have them slide back out. I think it was at like 14 before, so I'll go ahead and put it back there. And let's just play that uh, and see how it feels. Nice. So we've got our stent placed, looking pretty nice. Uh, let us control now our bulge. Uh, and to do that, I want to use the exact same keyframe points or very close to those keyframe points. All right, so I know that I want my bulge objects to change by 180 at frame 180. Uh, and I know I want them to kind of start. I can manually come back here and see where this is. I want it to be right at the edge of where these start to push through right there. 
So kind of at this point is where I want to keyframe what I've got my bulge settings currently on. And so I want to make sure that I'm keyframing them uh, where I need them to be. And so on the plaque, inner fat, and the inner layer, both of these bulge objects, I'm going to control click them. I could set up an Espresso tag for those, but there's only two things and it's really not that hard to control. So I'm just going to control click, contric, control click both of these so they're selected at the same time and I'm animating both of them at the same time. So I'm keyframing them there. And then at frame 180, I'm going to increase or decrease. No, well, increase because it was a decrease to begin with this bulge amount. So it's just sitting outside of my stent. It should be close to zero. I could just make it zero, but I don't want it to be kind of quite that far. So I'm going to see if I can get away with like minus two or something like that. Minus four. That feels pretty good. I'm just coming in here and inspect, inspecting this a little bit to see how close it actually is. And it's right up on it. That's exactly what I want. And so I'm going to go ahead and keyframe that there for both of those. And now this really bogs my computer down. Uh, or maybe I should have used like subdivision surfaces and turned them off and so it was only a render, but it's only over this small area like it plays really well until it gets to this point where the bulge is changing. And then it starts to really kind of go crazy. But what I want to do is just look at this and see how it's feeling. And I may need to make some modification in here just to make it a little bit more because of the and I could do this with the curves on each of them, actually. Let's pop open our dope sheet and look at both of our bulges here. Find that location. I'm going to control click or shift. I'm going to click both of these and just drag this center point up a little bit more. It may be that I just need to bring this in one more frame so that it happens one frame later. Or I could have done it the opposite direction. I need to go one frame back. Yeah, I went the wrong way. Okay. So this is the section that takes a little bit of tweaking just to make sure you don't get those overlapping polygons, right? You want the stent to be growing at the same speed that the cholesterol plaques are shrinking down. And I don't want it to be completely flattened out. So there's still a slight bulge in here, which is nice. And then after that's done, the balloon shrinks down and the guide wire pulls through. So that's how I would set up a simple stent placement animation. I'll go ahead and render this out. I'll set up some simple lights and uh, we'll, I'll show you the results and uh, we'll have a wrap up. I just wanna add in this little note. Uh, before I started rendering, I noticed that there was a gap right here between my fatty layer and the inner layer. And to fix that, I think the easiest thing to do is just come into this, to come into this inner layer and just in, or decrease the radius a little bit to this inner fat layer by just a couple notches. So I'll go down to 38 and that's going to create this nice overlap. Uh, the other thing I did is went into my, both of my tube objects and in the slice component here, I just nudged the degrees one dimension either way. Uh, and just to create a little bit more overlap so that the fat layer is kind of pushed back one little spot step behind those layers and, and that solved the problem.
So here are the final results of our stent animation with some simple lights placed in the scene. You can see everything's working pretty smoothly and uh, it's looking really good. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful for you. If it has, please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in another video.